When you hear the words PR practitioner, the one name that comes to my mind so readily is Dick Yarborough. Well, I've known Dick Yarborough for a long, long time. I met him as a businessman. I knew him when he was head of communication for Bell South Corporation. I knew him as a constituent. I represented him when I was a representative in the legislature in both the Senate and the House. But then he went on to the Olympics, and what an unbelievable story to be able to serve with Billy Payne and in that public relations role. I've had the pleasure of knowing Dick now for about 30 years ran into him periodically during dog uh, activities and functions uh, in Atlanta, and then became very close to him, of course, during the Olympics. His designation for crisis communication is so timely. Not long ago, I took out a textbook that I had in the early 70s at the J School, and I looked up crisis communication because I wanted to find a certain case study. In this whole book, this thick, there was a page and a half on disaster communications. We weren't even thinking crisis communications then. Well, you know, in life, you never know when a crisis is gonna hit. That's why they call it a crisis. And you have only seconds or moments at best to react. Dick's uh, greatest attribute, he's able to see a potential firestorm before it happens. On that fateful night when the Olympic Park bombing took place in Atlanta, the threat of the Olympic Games being closed, the threat of another incident happening, the threat of the networks beginning to diminish Atlanta's value as an Olympic site all hit around midnight, if I remember correctly. But we had a protocol that Dick had established uh, prior to the Games. If anything of that magnitude occurred, uh, we would call our um, predetermined group. And in less than eight hours, Dick Yarborough managed that crisis, managed the communication, and by 8 o'clock in the morning, the venues were open, the Olympics continued, there was not another event, and the press changed the subject rather than closing the Olympics. I would attribute uh, the ultimate way we continued the games and, and the consciousness and the spirit of the people of Atlanta and Georgia emerged so strongly uh, to the advice and strategy that Dick, uh, Dick gave me during that very difficult night. You would think that after an unbelievable career as a vice president with Bell South, and then going on to the Olympics, that one would rest on one's laurels and enjoy life. Dick was always my go-to source to catch up on what's happening in Georgia. How is our recruiting class going? Uh, how, how, is our, how are our teams performing? And I'm just delighted to be here to pay tribute to what they're doing for the Henry W. Grady School of Journalism, which I know is so important to Dick Yarborough. He wants to share with students who aspire to communications roles in their future, some of the experiences and lessons that he's learned along the way. The fact that he would be so anxious to do that for Grady College and then back it up with his own resources is a very strong statement of his commitment to the school. He's just really a great Grady grad and we are so honored that he would continue to support the school like he has.